Hello everyone, if you want an engaging Warframe that awards those who learn to use him correctly, deal damage, crowd control, and tank like no other, then you're at the right place. Let's talk passive. Baruch has this mechanic called restraint. You can lose restraint by using your first, second, and third ability. The less restraint you have, the more damage reduction you're gonna get, up to 50%, which is pretty good as far as passives go. Elude. While active, you will be immune to all non-AOE fire coming from a 180 degree angle in front of Baruch, as long as you're not attacking. So this will help you while reloading, casting abilities, reviving allies, etc. Be careful though, the angle is based on Baruch and not the camera. When I say as long as you're not attacking, I mean every time you shoot, you will be vulnerable for one second. So if you thought you'll be using a shotgun and be invincible, yeah, that's not gonna work. This ability scales of range and duration. Range increases the angle it covers up to 360 degrees at 200% range, and duration decreases its energy cost over time. Every projectile you dodge with elude will reduce your restraint. This creates an interesting situation, as if you find a high fire rate target like a heavy gunner in Grenier or a crewman in Corpus, you can easily get rid of your restraint in no time at all. And this also works backwards, so if your enemies are low fire rate or melee, you won't be able to get rid of your restraint as easily with this ability. LOL is a sleep crowd control ability with a crazy base radius of 25 meters, but it's line of sight. And instead of having wall intangibility, it has lingering effect. Meaning if an enemy comes inside the radius or in line of sight after the ability was cast, it still can be affected. The sleep effect is not instant though, it starts slowing the enemies down and after about 3 seconds it puts them to sleep. After they're asleep, dealing any damage to them will wake them up, though they will be stunned for about 5 seconds. And this is the only Warframe ability, the only Warframe ability that can reset enemy alert levels. So if you sleep a bunch of enemies, you can get stealth bonus after killing them. Fun fact, after an enemy is affected by lol, you can deal damage to them before they're asleep and they will still fall asleep. And if you continue to shoot them, they will go into a 5 second stun. And if you recast the ability before the 5 second stun is over, they will go back to sleep and then back to the stun and you can do this whole thing again. Basically. This is what makes Baruch so strong against Demolist in Disruption Game Mode and Kuva Liches, as no other Warframe can single-handedly permanent stun enemies. This ability scales of duration and range, and at base costs 50 energy, so fairly cheap. The base duration for the lingering effect and sleep duration respectively is 5 and 20 seconds. There is a catch though, you can't recast the ability until the lingering effect runs out which discourages increasing ability duration on the Warframe. And with no other power in the kit except 1 and 2 scaling off duration, you can easily get away with 50 to 100 ability duration. There is an argument for this ability called Endless Lullaby, which says it will recast the ability for the remaining duration of lull if you perform a finisher, which sounds stupid, because you have 5 seconds at base, it's not like 50 seconds, but as I test, that's not how it works. It actually recasts the ability for the entirety of the low duration. You might be thinking, oh, so basically this gives the melee weapons that can't kill on one finisher a chance, right? And you would be wrong, because if you can't kill it with one finisher, the moron will not be affected by a little after that for the duration of the low. So if that's 12 seconds, it will shoot you for 12 seconds, and then you can put it to sleep again. Oh, did I forget to say that plus 50% duration on this thing is only for the sleep duration, not the lingering effect itself. So yeah, useless augment. Well done, DE. Desolate Hands is a damage reduction ability, but instead of having duration or damage threshold, it has a different mechanic. You have 8 daggers at base, each giving you 10% damage reduction to both shields and health. If you add power strength to it, you'll get more daggers with no cap on it. With my build, you get 14 daggers. These daggers seek out and disarm enemies in a 6 meter radius around the rug and have a 3 meter explosive radius, but only disarm the main target. If you use your first ability while Desolate Hands is still active, the dagger's range will be twice, so 12 meters. If enough enemies are around you, your daggers will be going 1 per second. 
If you're a Rhino main, you might struggle a bit to get the hang of this ability, but if you're used to how this type of damage reduction works, shout out to Nova main, this ability will seem very efficient to you. Oh, I forgot to mention that you can also recast the ability. Serene Storm. Before I even start talking about this ability, let me talk about its augment, cause it's kinda unusable over level 60s without the augment. Its augment is called Reactive Storm, and it gives you 250% status chance scaling with power strength and turns the impact damage on Serene Storm into enemy's weakness. So corrosive for heavy gunners, radiation for bombards, magnetic for shields, viral for health, and gas for the infested. This is the ability that you will prefer to use, locked behind your strength but without energy cost, and it's only scaling up strength for its base damage. If your restraint is completely empty, you will be able to use Serene Storm for 2 full minutes. Oh, that doesn't sound impressive enough? What if I tell you you can get rid of restraint as you're using Serene Storm? And if you play wisely, you can hold the Serene Storm active indefinitely. Not that you need to, cause you have an amazing CC alongside an amazing survivability. Okay, let's start build. Keep the duration between 50 to 100 so you can recast your lol often enough to keep the enemies at bay and get rid of restraint. Efficiency is just quality of life, streamlines enough. As for range, if you increase your range, your damage reduction will be gone in no time, and if you decrease your range, your elude will be useless. So keep it at 100%. And as for strength, get it as high as possible. I added transient fortitude and intensify, but if I had the former, I would put blind rage and fleeting expertise. That's kind of better, but with the amount of power I have with Baruch, I really don't need more? So yeah, I I stopped at 2 forma, but if I wanted to, I would make this more powerful. But as of right now, there is no content in the game that needs me to make this build any more powerful. So yeah, that's enough. As for arcanes, having an arcane strike makes a big difference. Currently Scarlet Spear gives them away, so yeah, if you can grab one, that will be pretty dope. Okay, let's talk about Desert Wine build. We have crit chance, crit damage. We have melee damage. We have attack speed. We have, uh, I would suggest, I would prefer this to be a North Wine, but with the amount of power I have with Baruch, I don't really need more. So yeah, three, four more is enough. If you have Prime Fever Strike, it's a lot better than the normal version, like 90 with a 165, that's a big difference. As for range, Adding range is useless, quite literally. Not that I can actually put it. Okay, I can't put it. If you add range, the only benefit you're getting is for the base, not for the waves. Waves have 20 meter range, and it's not gonna change if you add that extra range on it. So yeah, that's about it. I hope this guide was helpful. Feel free to comment, share, like, and see you in another video. Bye-bye.